And now let's just look into the subfolders we have here in the root folder. And the first subfolder I like to talk about, it's the IMX modules folder. If I open the IMX modules folder, you can easily see these target Z files here. These target Z files are just, as I mentioned, the compressed API clients of the Identity Manager API server. This is resource stuff the Identity Manager is using to do different things, for example, to configure the attestation. And at the end, these are resources you will reference later on then in a project to get specific functionality. At the end, it is something which is a middleware between the API server itself and your client portal, covering specific functionality according to a specific module in the Identity Manager. The next two folders I like to talk about are the Shared Assets folder and the Projects folder we already saw. First, the Shared Assets folder. The Shared Assets folder is exactly the folder you use for all the different assets you use in a web page. These can be pictured items, fonts, icons, styles, all of that stuff you want to send around together with your web project. Therefore, the Shared Assets folder is, and that is what you will use for additional content, like for example, your partner company logo or the customer partner logo or something like that. Additionally, to that folder exists the important project folder. In the project folder, you can find Angular projects. Each Angular project is its own project, like the project we saw in part two of our video series. There are two different types available. One, it's a library project, which is, for example, the DPR module. This is a library project. And there is, of course, an app project, like, for example, the app portal is. The app portal is our standard web portal. And if you look into that, then you see it looks a little bit different than, for example, such a library. From a developer perspective, the functionality typically sits in a library. And uh, the web portal just says what is at the end to generate, for example, the standard web portal. If I look into that specific subfolder where the web portal recedes, then I can see one important files beside all the other stuff we know, like the index HTML and stuff. And this is the environments folder. In the environments folder, you will find two different environment configuration. One for development. This is the configuration this server is using right now. And we have to remember that because that is exactly what we have to change. For example, here it's the URL to my very specific API server project. And as you can see, this is a local host that won't work for my API server. And so it's necessary later on to replace that by a URL that just addresses my API server in my development framework. But let's talk about that again later. The second one here is the environment productive. This is the configuration that is used if I generate my very specific project and it became a copy in the dist folder. Something other else we will show a little bit later. And the only thing I have to know right now is that this is something I use for development. And this is something that is later on used if I just generate my complete project for a production use. If I just close that specific app portal here and open one of the library folders and projects, then I can have a look into these as well. In the file tsconfig lib.json, I find the configuration of that specific library project. There it is. And of course, there is an according tslint.json file, which show me the compiler configuration for that specific library project. Additionally, to these both files here in the root folder, we will find the source directory where typically our content exists. And easily to see, not a lot of configuration in there. There is a public API and a test, which might be later on for testing. Additionally, there is a lib folder. And in the lib folder, you will find then some more stuff we will discuss pretty soon. Putting all together, what we have to know is there are two different projects available, library projects and portal projects or application projects. All of them can contain, of course, a lot of TypeScript content, HTML stuff, 
layout, assets, environments, as we have seen for the portal, for testing and such. This is content we will change later on. All of that content together, that means all in the IMX web folder is what we call the Angular workspace. And that is what we need to change. Two more folders are missing. And I like to show them after I started my project because without starting the project and compiling some content, I don't get these specific files. Okay, in this step of the video, we want to start that complete web project and to debug it until I am able to sign in and to work with some bits. To do so, we have to talk about first of that specific project structure. We have talked about it, of course. I told you there are library projects and, of course, portal projects or application projects. And uh, we have to know what's to start if I want to start a standard web portal. As you can easily see, there are many modules. Each module covers a specific functionality, but what's to start, of course, is always the QBM module and the QER module. These are the two base modules. Without them, you can't do anything. And we have, of course, to start the portal itself. And this is here, the QER app portal. Before I can start something, I have as well to look into that QER web portal and to ensure that this web portal just finds my API server. Therefore, I have to end open here environments and then there is the environment TS. And as you easily can see, we saw that before, there is a HTTP address and that points to a local machine. Remember my speech from the beginning of this video part. I was talking about that our web developers are using an API server locally installed, and this is what it reflects right now. What I have to do before I can start something, I have to move, of course, to my browser, find my API server, here it is, copy the URL of that API server and paste that URL exactly right now here into that place where that local machine is just displayed. Once that is done, I can just save the complete environment. So just save it. And with that, I'm able to work. And with that, it is time to start my specific projects. Therefore, I need command shells. I will use just uh, standard command shells and I need three of them. Remember, two for the both modules I need and one for the portal I want to start. And doing so, the next thing I need to do is just to find the right directory. Therefore, I just open here my specific folder where my directory or where my complete web project exists. And this is the path where I want to start things. So I just uh, ensure that any of my shells here just shows the right directory. And then I can directly start. It is helpful if you know exactly what's to start um, and it's a little bit complicated part of partially. And for the begin, I did something really fancy. I just started or created a specific file. You can see that file here on right, that is HRA readme text. You will find that file, of course, into the according GitHub repository where we can download stuff according to that video. You find that description down below. That means uh, in the detail section of that specific video. And if you check that out, you get aware of that file. The file contains, of course, some commands and some hints for a specific version of the portal. Let me show you that. I just close this here. I open the file right here and you see this is a text file and that text file contains many steps. All of these steps are necessary to get a, a project running. Uh, it is according, and that is important, to version 9.0.0 of the web project and of course an installation 9.1.0 of the API server. That means an identity manager 9.1. And uh, all of these commands will be explained during the next minutes. Uh, I, I'm right here where I just put my uh, URL into that specific environment. 
And uh, now let's directly start and we will then see what happens and fix errors if necessary. So to start, so I start with an npm and then of course run build watch. That is the command I need. And then I want to start the QBM module, which is the first one. Remember all of these modules are depending on each other. So that means I have to start one. And once it is started, then of course I can start the next one. Later on, it's not very necessary to take care of because once these things are started, they are depending on each other. And of course, they are waiting on each other. You know, there is the hot reload that exists and that hot reload will then, uh, of course, uh, find changes and compile again. As you can easily see, the compilation works and we wait until this is done. And here we are. You can see in the message here on the left lower, two, um, yeah, I like to say some files was just created. Um, it is pointing to a directory that is called dist. There it is. That means it was building from the source of the QBM module, a distribution of the QBM module. And that is exactly what you can see here on right. Uh, you see here some folders which are not part of the versioning. An Angular folder, of course, and a modules folder that was together with the install, the npm install we did before. But new is here the dist folder. And if I open the dist folder, then you will find that completely compiled module in the dist folder. Perfect. Now let's do exactly the same with QER. I step to my next console and say npm run again, build watch. And this time it is QER I like to start. It is more or less the same. And what you easily can see here in green is that as well in the dist folder, there is now a QER folder. Yes, of course, here it is. So this thing happens as well. And the last thing I have to start is, of course, the portal that runs a little bit different than before. It is an npm run again, but this time I have to start a web portal. So start. And I need, of course, the name of that specific web portal. Um, that could be sometimes a little bit uh, problematic because it's more than three characters. And so I just stump back here. I step into my project folder here. You see there is my app portal. This is the one I want to start. So I copy the name, paste the name here into my uh, command shell and start that specific portal. So, and if I now like to start my debugging session, what's to do there is I have uh, to step in my Visual Studio code. Here we are into the debugging session. From the drop down box, I need to select the right project. The right project was selected QER App Portal Chrome. And if this is selected, I can hit the green button. And then a Google browser should start. And as you easily can see, uh, you will see here the login box. Here we are. And um, I can and, uh, select, of course, here my employee role based authentication. There it is. And I can enter a user and enter a password. What happens there is beside the message um, that I get automatically locked out. That means there must be somewhere an error. And that is what I now like to debug. Therefore, I open the developer tools. Developer tools can be opened with F12. And once the developer tools are open, I can just press Control F5 again so that the page gets refreshed again and the cache gets uh, deleted. And uh, I'm in the login mask again. I sign in again. And here is my error again. Next thing is that I figure out what the error is. Therefore, I open here the network section of my specific developer tools I, cre uh, I have here on the right hand side. And I look at the red messages, starting with the portal message up front. There is a portal message. As I can see, there is an error message that says same site lacks secure and HTTP. Okay, let's see what the error message should be. 
So cookie was blocked because same site lacks attribute but came from a cross site response which was not uh, the response to the top level navigation. Okay. Knowing that, um, it is a problem uh, that exists um, because on the one hand side, we are using here the same side security lacks and we have a problem uh, with an API server, which is installed on an other server than just locally. And so we just lower at this case, uh, I like to say the security. We will lower the same side security to none. Unfortunately, this is something you can currently only do for all of the API server sites right now hosted on this specific API server. Therefore, I need to step into designer. This is designer. Here we are in designer. Um, there is a specific configuration parameter you see underneath of QBM API server default same site cookie. It is turned to lax. This is the default and I will enter none um, to lower the security for development. I commit that to my database. And of course, to ensure that my web server recognize it, I will as well step to the server and uh, will on the server just um, restart the IAS. Therefore, I need, of course, my server. And once I'm on the server, I can directly run the IAS reset, which will just start and stop my IAS server. And then, of course, back on my machine, I can, with Control F5, run the same site again. And as you easily can see, I'm just in a loop. That means nothing happens. And I see here another red arrow message. So I select as well this red arrow message. There's not too much to see what the problem is. But I know in situations where I see that entity schema message, it could be that something is wrong with my API server connection. So I will start with a control F5 again. This time I don't see a red arrow message. That makes me promising that I was only too fast just to hit my buttons. Here we are. There is my login mask. And voila. Here we can start now directly to add changes if we like to.